Okay, hi, I'm Richard Ellis. Today we're going to learn about gravitational lensing. And gravitational lensing is the bending of light by massive objects in the universe. And uh, what I'm going to tell you is how astronomers use this to learn lots of important things about the universe and the galaxies uh, that are inside the, the universe. So uh, we start with a little bit of history. The bending of light by massive objects uh, has an interesting history. It was considered as a possibility by Isaac Newton as long ago as 1704 in his book Optics. Uh, and then there was a calculation done in 1784. Uh, but these calculations, these early calculations, were really incorrect because they treated light as a particle uh, that is accelerated and decelerated as it passes a massive object. So the idea and the principle of gravitational lensing is you have a, some object uh, that is called the lens and you have a background object, uh, a star or a galaxy perhaps, and the light as it passes uh, the massive object is deflected by this angle alpha. So the observer with his telescope is sitting here and so he or she sees the, this star uh, displaced in the sky by this angle alpha. And the deflection angle was calculated uh, in the 18th and 19th century to be two times the gravitational constant, the mass, over the radius of this ob uh, distance from this object and the speed of light squared. And um, then along came Einstein. And initially, Einstein, in his theory of relativity, demonstrated that this was, in fact, uh, the correct answer, even though it was a relativistic calculation. But then later, uh, uh, four years later, he realized in his general theory of relativity that mass actually distorts space as well. And this is the basis of the gravitational force, the distortion of space by massive objects. And this actually doubles the deflection, making it four times uh, this equation rather than two times. And so he tried very hard to get observers to verify this. Now, how do you measure the deflection of light by a massive object? You use an eclipse because you have stars near the center, near the, near the sun's limb that you would otherwise not be able to see except for the time of an eclipse. And a very famous astronomer, uh, British astronomer Eddington, went to this island off the west coast of Africa, Principe, and this is the actual photograph that he took at the time of this famous eclipse in 1919. He verified this deflection, including the fact of four that Einstein predicted. And after that moment, Einstein became a very famous uh, scientist. So gravitational lensing, of course, works in many ways, not just stars, starlight deflected by the sun, but also galaxies can act as lenses. So in this particular image, what you see is the observer here, is the galaxy here, background galaxy here, a cluster of galaxies here. And what you see uh, with your telescope depends on three things. It depends on the power of the lens. That's how massive it is and how concentrated it is. Think of an optical lens that is bending light. It's exactly the same analogy. It depends on the relative distance between the background source, the lens, and the observer. If the lens is very close to the observer, it doesn't have much effect. If the lens is very close to the background source, there's not much in effect. But if it's somewhere in the middle, then it can have its maximum focusing power. And then it depends also on the degree of alignment of the observer, the lens, and the background source. And that's shown in this up here. If it's very well aligned, then you see the light is deflected by many different routes. So you see what we call multiple images. You see the same image on the sky in different places of one object. So this is quite amazing. Um, but if you move a little bit away so that the alignment isn't perfect, then you still see a weak distortion. So uh, here's a, a case where the, um, the alignment is perfect. So here's the Earth. Here's a galaxy that's acting as a lens. And here's a background source. And in this case, all three are in a perfect straight line. And this is a very powerful lens. And so you see, you get a ring. You see uh, on the sky what we call an Einstein ring. And the diameter of that ring depends very sensitively on the mass of this foreground object and the, dist the relative distances involved. And so the Hubble Space Telescope has shown us many 
beautiful examples of these Einstein rings. And here's a very nice uh, selection of Hubble images where the galaxy uh, that's doing the, the lensing, so that's the, four, the intermediate object here, is the orange object. And the background galaxy is the blue image that's distorted into almost a complete ring. Now you can see the rings aren't always perfect and that's because the foreground galaxy isn't always exactly aligned and isn't always uh, a symmetrical point-like point, uh, point -like object. But I think you'd agree this is a very impressive demonstration of general relativity and the bending of light by background objects. And we use the diameter of these rings to tell us a lot about uh, the nature of mass in the foreground lens and the, dis the relative distances involved. Now, of course, in nature, we don't always get perfect alignment of ourselves, a lens, and a galaxy. And the galaxy that's doing the lensing may often not be symmetric. It may not be a round, point-like object. It could be elliptical in shape. And so this just shows you um, uh, that in that case, you don't get an Einstein ring. You get multiple images, uh, in this case, five images of the same object. Uh, depending on the relative degree of alignment. So for each of these little colored dots, for this light blue dot here, you just get uh, this little tiny distortion here. If it moves a little bit more in alignment, you get this dark blue dot. You can see you get three multiple images. And then if you come right on axis, you get uh, five multiple images. And uh, the mathematics of this was, was done very nicely in the 1960s, but it wasn't until uh, 1987 that we started to see these on the actual sky. So this is a very famous uh, image in a cluster of galaxies. So this is the foreground lens. These are the individual galaxies in the cluster. And this in elongated image is a spiral galaxy. There are three images of this spiral galaxy, uh, very much like in this image here. Uh, and this was verified in, uh, by, by uh, uh, Genevieve Sukai, a French astronomer, in the 1987 or so. So uh, when Hubble Space Telescope was launched, then of course we were able to find many examples of these multiple images. Here's uh, a rather hook-like little image here. You can see it's symmetrical. There are one, two, three images here. And here's uh, a really amazing image from Hubble of five images of the same galaxy, again produced by this foreground massive cluster. So gravitational lensing was beautifully verified by Hubble Space Telescope.